Well, good morning and welcome to St. Matthew. I'm going to take my mask off here. Um, why don't we go ahead and stand up and will you guys do like your best Air 5 impressions to the people across the aisles to you? And if you're at home, um, will you get on your feet and will you just do some stretches? <laughs> because I think that's important before we get started in worship today. Um, get some Air 5s around the room here. And then we're going to sing a couple of opening songs of worship here.
interests of my own. I had no right to draw near the throne. Father, you love me still. And in love before you laid the world's foundation, you predestined to adopt me as your own. You have raised your face was set. I worked my fingers down to the bone. Nothing I did could ever atone. Jesus, you paid my you made me see. I swore I knew the way on my own. Head full of rocks and not made of stone. The Spirit, you moved in me. At your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened. On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shown. Can have a seat. Should have talked with you about that one because I was going to have them stand for the gospel, but we won't do religious calisthenics this morning. You can stay seated. It's all right. Uh, I want to start with a word from Mark uh, chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up on a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His face became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and the voice came from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And they were coming down the mountain. Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. We come to worship this God, our Father, whose love, power, and grace is made known to us in Jesus Christ, whose spirit breathes life into our hearts and to our lives. We gather to worship this God, and yet we hear those words of the Father. This is my son. Listen to him. Pastor Brad in a little bit is going to talk about how we are, are blessed. 
when we put God's word into practice in our lives. And of course, we are blessed in grace because we are only saved by grace in Jesus, but we are more blessed as we live in the way that God set before us, as we become a blessing to those that God has placed in our lives around us, in the pockets and the places where he has planted us for the sake of his kingdom. So we come before our God now and confess that that we sometimes are slow to hear his voice and put it into practice in our lives. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this day in the grace of Jesus, knowing that we are your loved children because of what you have done for us in Jesus. And Lord, we know that we don't always listen to your voice. So we ask that you would send your spirit on us again and stir in our hearts. Help us to hear the voice of Jesus that we may put into practice his words in our life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Because God's love for you is not conditional on what you do, I have the grace and the privilege to Speak the words of forgiveness to you. The words given me to speak by Jesus. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven and set free in Jesus. But that forgiveness and that freedom is not supposed to stop with us. It is supposed to continue on through us into the world and bring peace. As Paul says to the Corinthians at the end of 2 Corinthians, Paul says these words. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people hear and send their greetings. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have that word to live as his people of peace in this world. And yet Jesus remains our anchor. And so we sing our praises to this Jesus who is our anchor in life. changing
happy Valentine's Day. Thanks. I brought with me the most beautiful bouquet ever. Isn't this what we all want for Valentine's Day? Isn't this gorgeous? It's at least like a dozen rows worthy, right? Like this is, this is good. Well, it really kind of is, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. You see, the greatest love that we can ever experience is the love that God has given us, right? So in the beginning, God created the world for us to, to live in, and he created us. And he created us in his image, right? And so that love just kind of grows, isn't that exciting? God's love has grown for us, it's so great. And as we go on, well, we've made some mistakes, right? And, and gosh, he still loves us anyway. Isn't that amazing? His love just keeps growing for us and, and we get to experience that love. And then God gave us people like, like all of you here to grow with one another, right? And that's so amazing. His love is so great that he gives us one another and that love just keeps on growing, right? Well, this is turning into a quite the amazing bouquet. Maybe this is better than flowers, right? And then God said, you know, you, you have made some mistakes, but then he said, I'm going to send my son Jesus to be born here on this earth. And we get to experience this love of Christmas here. And that love just keeps on growing. In fact, I'm not all that tall and this is going to get a little bit intense for me here. I might have to call up Becca to help me here. And, and that love that God has for us just keeps growing because he sent his son Jesus for us. Well, that ultimate love that we get to experience, my friends, is even more incredible. I'm not sure. Actually, let's just do this. Okay. That he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and to take away our sins and that love just keeps growing and growing and growing that we have this, it doesn't break, <laughs> that we have this amazing love that God gives to us each and every day. And it's so incredible to see how that love grows and our love for him grows as well. So as we ponder that, we're going to invite Pastor Brad up to start our sermon together. And um, I'll put some instructions on how you can do this at home online later as well. Here you go. Becca. <laughs> okay. So I'm sitting out there worshiping and I hear the keyboard. Did you guys hear the keyboard? Nice job, Larry. Blah, 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 right? And, and then, I, then I hear the bass back here with Chris. Blah, blah. And then I hear the drums. Did you hear him starting the song? Did you hear Bobby start the song? Oh, yeah. And the vocalists, oh, yeah. They were awesome. Matt, Matt and Becca, let's give thanks to God for them, huh? Let's give thanks to God for them. They were awesome. <laughs> uh, we're, um, this is the last uh, of, of our series. We call it Together. We're focusing on relationship. Uh, uh, which is my wheelhouse. Uh, the more I, I in, into the word, the more I see that it, God's all about relationship. Uh, we, we were created for relationship. In fact, even before sin entered the world, God said it's not good for man, for humankind to be alone. Uh, and, and part of being created in the image of God, I believe, is that gr God dwells in perfect relationship as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in perfect love from eternity to eternity. And what He created you and I for is to be joined in that relationship with him and through him with each other. This is what life is all about. It's not just a beating heart. That, that, that word is bios in the Greek, but rather it's zoe. It's, it's this life in relationship with God and through him with one another. And this is what we lost when we turned away from God. And what God gives us back in Jesus Christ. Jesus came, he said that they might have life and have it to the full. It's not just a get out of hell free card to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, is connecting us to God in this perfect relationship, the way life was meant to be uh, lived. The only way we can be filled up and happy and hold that hole in our heart, it's the only way that we can be filled up in that is to know Jesus Christ and live in Him. It's not just simply getting out of hell. It's about life right now and life with Him forever in this relationship. And then through Him, living in that relationship of love with each other. But it's hard sometimes because sin still hangs on to us. Now, especially with COVID, we thought, well, we'll have a lot more time together, so it'll be easier to have a relationship, huh? Well, we, we tend to foul up. Have you noticed that? And so you give us more time, we foul up even more. And, and so what we noticed is that it was even tougher uh, to connect to each other in ways that we should. So we thought we'd do this series, and, and we, we, we called it together. 
uh, and, and we gave you this, uh, th this tool to use uh, the last few weeks. Go ahead. Uh, and and it, we call it the home huddle. And together, these tool, this tool we gave you, we've been giving you principles, really biblical principles, uh, uh, and, and, and we kind of connected it to the tool. And, and what, what I would, what I would uh, just hold up for you is, hey, I'd love you to use this tool. I think it's powerful. Uh, but whether you use it or not, take the principles with you in your life. Okay? And that, that is be, be present. That's where we started, right? Attend one another. Not, not just physically present, uh, but, but, in, but in every way uh, focused and there, being attentive or attending the other one. And with our tool, we said, well, this is what we want to do when we share our lives, when we do our highs and lows with each other. And I hope some of you have experienced that. It can be very powerful, very challenging with little kids. Sometimes I know I had them at one time, right? But it can be very powerful, and it does something in their lives as, as you stick it out. And, and then we, we, we talked about being grace-filled. You see, God just doesn't forgive our sins. By the power of His Holy Spirit, He brings pizzazz into our lives. We know every human being, it's the human condition, we all know that life should be about love and joy and peace and hope. It's why everybody celebrates Christmas, whether you know God or not. We love Christmas. Why? Because we remember this is what life should be about. The Spirit of God brings that into our hearts in the relationship that we have with Jesus. And, and the verse we talked about is we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step by the Spirit by bringing that into the lives of those around us. And, and how do we grow in that? Well, His Word is called the sword of the Spirit. The Spirit of God in His grace touches our hearts when we're in that Word. And as we talk about it, His Spirit's there in a special way. Huh? Where two or three are gathered together, my name are there in the midst of them. And so we grow in grace as we hear his word and, and talk about what it means to our lives and how to put it into practice and do it. And then uh, the last week we talked about being open or um, being known. Uh, yeah, this is a need of every human being. We want to be known. Uh, we cry out, there's nobody who understands us sometimes, huh? God knows us perfectly. And he comes to us in his grace to receive us and to be known by us. Uh, and then to empower us in his spirit to give us open hearts to be known by the other and want to know the other. And, and in this tool, we, we, we said, you know, if you pray together out loud and open your hearts to God, you'll be opening your hearts to each other. And you'll begin to be known more and more to one another. That's, that's kind of where we did, huh? Today we're going to talk about being a blessing, being a blessing. Um, and I want to start with um, three pictures. <laughs> we'll put them on the screen here and we'll put them uh, for you at home. And I, I want you to look at these for a second, study them for a second, see what, what hits you to begin with, right? Um, and, and then also see um, how you feel about them, that visceral reaction to them, okay? Uh, so I'm uh, just, especially for you at your home, know this, I'm going to not talk for a little while, it's going to be tough on me, but just for a, a few seconds so you can look at these pictures, see what hits you, see how you feel about them. Go. So I'm up here on stage. I, I hope uh, that you can see them fairly well back then. I hope you can see them at home. Uh, but how did you react? You see two guys there, and you see the one guy. Uh, at, at least you see him face-to-face uh, -face touching the other one. Do you see that? Huh? And, and, and he's got his, his head in his hands. Huh? Uh, and, and then the, 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 the other one, I don't know if you can see it, but he's horribly deformed. Uh, his face doesn't even look like a human face. And, and if it could show his hands, uh, they don't have any fingers left. They're just stubble. The man is, is a leper. Uh, and and th this is from a, a movie. It's called Risen. And, and in, this, in this scene, what Jesus is having breakfast with his disciples. Uh, and and this, this man is, is chased out of a little village at, at arms like at stick's length, right? They're beating him because they're so frightened of him, and they won't come close to him. And so he's in a, he's in a puddle of protoplasm, just weeping. And he has uh, rags on for clothes. I don't know if you noticed that, but, but his clothes are rags, and, they, and, and you can't help but know that they stink, right? And so Jesus sees this. He takes a fish. They're, they're, cooking, they're, they're, they're baking fish, right? Uh, so he takes a fish to take to him, 
And when he goes to him, he, he sits down in front of him. And he takes his arms in his own and hugs him and he comes face to face with him. He, he gets right in front of him. And he touches him. And, and for the longest time in the movie, he's just there like that, or it seems like a long time. And, and inside, you're saying, oh man, I wouldn't touch him. Let's be honest, huh? And you're thinking, boy, he must really stink. But, but it's like Jesus is, is one with him. And then after a while, he, he begins to whisper to him. And as the man gets up and is leaving, he turns around and you see that he's completely healed. His hands are whole and his face is whole. Jesus healed him. This is what we're going to talk about today. Jesus comes in front of us, kneels down in our dust and in our brokenness and in our struggle and in our pain and our hurt and our anger, and he heals us. He touches us and speaks his words over us and blesses us. It's what we received in his relationship with him, and it's what we're empowered to give away to those around us. There's a, um, there's a, a, a story in the Bible. It's, it's in Matthew. Go ahead, put that up for me. And uh, uh, Jesus actually does come face to face with a leper. Uh, and, and, and the leper, the, it's funny, he's, he's, he's coming out, he's just preached the Sermon on the Mount, and so the crowd is with him, and he's coming down out of, out of the, the, the high place that he was in, right? And this leper plops right down in front of him. And, and, and what, what's interesting is that uh, uh, the, the people must have gone, oh my gosh, a leper, they didn't want to get close. They probably didn't have a stick close to beat him away, right? Because they weren't going to get close to him. And so before they know it, he's right in front of Jesus. And before they can grab a stick, right? The man is saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Before they can grab a stick, this is what happens. Go. Jesus reached out his hand. Read the rest of it with me. He touched him. He touched him. He touched him with a touch of love. And then he spoke these words. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately, he was cured of the leprosy. I think the reason the crowd couldn't react is when it says Jesus touched him, he didn't do it like this. He didn't kind of say like this. No, I think he got right in front of him and he took himself into his arms and he touched his face with his face. And he loved him. He embraced him in this touch of love. And only after that did he speak words of blessing. I was talking with Ron Oling, our deacon, this last week, and um, he was sharing, me, sharing with me about this short film clip that he saw, and, and it was about the grace and the love of God. You know, usually, here, I, they, they put some chairs up here for me. So, so, so usually... When people talk about how God loves us, you have uh, you and I or Adam or whoever, he's sitting in the chair with God, and what he does with sin is he turns away from God. And usually how people talk about that, they say God, he pursues us. He's like a lover pursuing us, right? Coming from behind us. But this film made the point again and again, no, this is what God does. He gets in front of us, and he meets us where we're at. And then we turn away again, and God gets in front of us, and he meets us where we're at. He gets in the dirt with us. He gets in the dust with us. And then we turn away, and we're misshapen, and we're ugly, and we're the unlovable one. And God gets right in front of us, and he embraces us, and he loves us. It does this over and over again so that we can get the idea that what Jesus did for this leper, he does for every single one of us in our brokenness in our struggle, in our anger. Every time we turn away, God just doesn't pursue us. He goes in front of us, and in our broken lives, in our broken world, He gets in front of us and meets us there. 
and he embraces us with his love, and he blesses us with his words and his actions. That's what today is about. Go ahead. Jesus, he, um, he, he met this man uh, who was blind, right? And his disciples immediately asked this question, who sinned? <laughs> you see, the belief at that time was, hey, he must have done something wrong, or his parents must have done something wrong, and God's, God's whacking him, right? That's why he's blind, either because of him or his parents, and, and, and he's getting whacked here. And Jesus says, no, 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 no one sinned here. This happened so that the glory and might of God might be revealed in him. And then he says this. As long as it is day. Would you read what's underlined? One, two, three. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. We. One more time, real loud. This isn't just about Jesus healing some guy. This is an example for us, see? He says, as long as this is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. We. How do we do that? We, we kneel down in the face of the brokenness of those who are close to us. Whether that's our children or our parents or our husband or our wife. Whoever that is in our relationships, we kneel down even when they're untouchable. Even when we're angry, even when they're angry, even when they've screwed up. See? We get in the dust with them, and we embrace them with the embrace of love. And then we speak words of blessing that reflect our hearts of love. That's what we do. We do it, see? And then it says this. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. He touched him. And I, I really think he got in the dust with him here, too. You know, he made it, and he kneels down, and he puts it in the man's eyes. You get that? And notice here, this is our example. What we are supposed to do, we're supposed to touch folks, guys. We're supposed to make sure they know we love them. Sure, appropriate ways, especially in COVID-19, all those things. But this is powerful stuff. We, we touch them, we say words of blessing, and we follow that with words and actions of love. Go ahead. The little girl who had died, and uh, the father had called Jesus, and, and he said she, she was very sick. By the time Jesus got there, she was dead. And, and so Jesus, when he was in the room, he said she's only sleeping, and the crowd laughed. So he put the crowd out. And the crowd went outside, and he went in. Read what's, what, what's uh, uh, large letters there. Ready? He went in and took the little girl by the hand. I don't make this stuff up, guys. He took the little girl by the hand, and she got up. This is from Matthew. He took the little girl by the hand. Now, I want to ask you how he did this. Here's a dead girl there, right? Did he do it like this? How do you think, he, or do you think he did it like this? Do you think he met her in her death, and he raised her up? How do you think he did it? And what's so amazing in Matthew, it just leaves it like this. Now, in Luke, a parallel account, it says the same thing. He took the little girl by the hand, but it also says this. He spoke words of power over my child, get up. Words of blessing, right? But what's emphasized in Matthew is the touch. He healed her. He raised her up with his touch of love. I want you to know that in every dead place in your life, Jesus is not shrinking away. He comes to you personally and touches you. He doesn't, he kneels with you in the dust. He, he lifts you up and would resurrect you, wherever that might be in your life. And he speaks words of blessing over you. And empowers you to do the same in the lives of others. This is one of my favorite ones in the whole Bible. He took the, yeah, so you, you got to picture this, right? Kids are trying to break through to Jesus and the disciples say, oh, no, no, keep those kids away. Keep those kids away. And Jesus gets ticked off. And he said, no, no, you let those children come to me. Of such is the kingdom of God, right? I, I, this is one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. I can just see him. Yeah, because I, I, I guess because I, I just, I don't think I ever grew up. I, th I still think I'm a kid, you know? And so it's nice to know that Jesus wants me there. And, and, and then it says this, and he took the children in his arms, 
Read, read, read the next uh, uh, phrase. Go. Put his hands on them. Does it, say, does it say he blessed them and then put his hands on them? No, it says he put his hands on them and blessed them. Question for you. What communicated his love to them? What was more powerful in their lives? His, his touch or his words? You're a little kid. What is it? His touch, huh? I remember uh, when I was uh, a, a young guy, I was uh, the third through eighth grade, I, I had a paper out. And uh, I delivered to, to a fire station, and I would always take the paper in because they asked me to the desk. And, and there was a new captain that came in. I think I had the route maybe two or three years. And he happened to be my football coach uh, that, that, that year. Uh, and, and I remember uh, I went in, so the season ended, and I, it was probably in December, you know, and I walked in with a newspaper, and, and uh, he, was at the, he was there for some reason, you know, he was the captain, uh, and, he, and he said, hey, Brad, and I said, yes, sir, back then you had to call your coaches, sir, or you ran, okay, so anyway, so I said, yeah, yes, sir, and, and, and so he, um, he, he said, come here, I, I, I want to meet you, I want you to introduce you to all the guys, and I'm thinking, so I'm out of my element, he takes me in the back, they had all these hoses, these huge guys all standing around me, I'm just a kid, and, and I was a little uneasy, and I'll never forget, he put his arm around me, and, and, and you know, not, not, not just like this, strong, put his arm around me. And he said to all these guys, hey, this is the kid I was telling you about. And he said, you know what, he brings the paper in every day. He really deserves a good Christmas tip. Got $25 that year. $25, I got $25 next year. I got $25 the year after that. But I remember the hug more than anything else. Touch of love is how we heal people. It's followed by words of blessing, by actions of love. Number six, uh, you have this blessing in the Bible, and, and I think you have to understand here that the, the, the patriarchs of, of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, 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 the beginning of the people of Israel, right? The, the Jewish people uh, with their, and, and Joseph as well, with, when they were old, they would bless their children. They would lay their hands on them and they would bless them. Uh, and and they, would, they, they, they would say these wondrous words of blessing as they were touching their, their, their children. By the way, parents, um, you know, I, I read a book years ago. It changed the way I painted it. I think it was called The Blessing. And it was talking especially with, with uh, uh, husbands and their sons how, how you need to pass on to them that, that they have what it takes. And one way you do that is, 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 to, is to give them a hug and tell them they have what it takes. It was a powerful book. It changed. It's not about me anymore. See, it's about passing on the blessing. This is powerful stuff we're talking about right now. And so when the children of Israel, they were now hundreds of thousands. <laughs> yeah, they were now hundreds of thousands, right? Uh, God tells the high priest, Aaron, to bless the people this way. And how did he do it? He put his hands up. See, he couldn't touch every single one of them. He put his hands up. He was, in his spirit, touching every single one of them. And he was blessing them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You can't make this stuff up, guys. A few years ago, um, Jane and I were in a, a collegial group. It's called Pastoral Leadership Institute. We were in a, 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 a small cohort. There were, there were six couples, right? And, um, and we really uh, flew to different places, and we looked at churches, and we grew together, and, and, and uh, we, we were a real tight group. But the first time we got together at a, at a, a hotel for, for a weekend, and... and uh, we, we were getting to know each other, and, and we kind of gelled. And at the end of that time, just before we were going to get on planes and fly to, the, to all, everywhere in the United States, uh, one of the gals said, um, you know, we need to pray for each other. And she said, let's have each of us, um, let's make a circle, and each of us can step in the circle, and we can lay our hands on each one, and we'll go around the circle, and each of us will pray for them. And that's what we did. I'll never forget it. It was so powerful in my life. Uh, and, and the touch, the touch tied to those words of blessings were amazing. To this day, we're, we're, uh, we just connected this last Christmas, and it was like no time had gone by. This is what God told the high priest to do, and our high priest is Jesus. 
And each of us is called a priest of God. <laughs> we put our hands on each other. We touch them with his love. And we say these words of blessing and that point towards actions of love. Go ahead. In Corinthians, it puts this all together. It starts like this. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Would you read that first part with me again? Greet one another with a holy kiss. that make you nervous? <laughs> Greet one another. What is that thing? What is that holy kiss anyway? I'm not sure what it is, guys. I just know somehow they kissed each other. They connected with each other. You know, every culture has it the way it connects, right? Right now, we're, I, I had a fist pump about a bunch of people after the first service, but you know what? It connected. Or, or the elbow deal, you still connect, huh? Or with, with, my, with, with my coach who put his arm around me, right? That connects. In, in Hungary, they, they do this, uh, some of them do this, um, this double kiss cheek thing, you know? That, that, uh, I, never got, I, I never could get the rhythm with that. I, I, I tried and I, I just am not quite there. I, I don't know what it is, but it's pretty awesome. They connect physically, see? Greet one another with a holy kiss. It's not hi. It's hi. Shake somebody's hand. I, I know with COVID you can't do this now. But maybe in your homes with your husband, your wife, with your children, you can begin, huh? And maybe in that, that group that, that you're safe in, you can do this. Bless one another with a touch of love and then words of blessing and, and healing. Kneel with each other in the dust. Even when the other one is unlovable and is misshapen because of their sin. Enter into their world and, 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 and kneel down and take them into your arms. And love them and bless them. This goes on, and, and I, I didn't doctor this up. Very next thing in, in, that Paul wrote is this. He connects the blessing to the touching. Do you see that? He connects the blessing to the kiss. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is our example. I, uh, a number of years ago, my, my mom died. My dad had died first. And uh, when we did her funeral, there were people from the church they were attending at the time and people from the church I grew up in. And, and after the funeral, I had, I had so many people come up to me and, and they said something like this, we loved your mom and dad because every time they came to church and every time they came to something, they were leaning into each other arm in arm and you could just tell they loved each other. I mean, it was like 15 people told me this thing, you know? And they, say, they said it was such an example for us in our lives. This is the example in our life. You see, greet one another with a holy kiss. Bring the touch of love into the lives of those who are close to you. Will they deserve it so? No, no. Well, will you want to sometimes? No, no, they'll be like, you'll be like the leper, right? I'm not going to touch that dude. And yet, you can bring the blessing that Jesus brought to the leper. You can be the one who calls people out of their places of death. You can be the one who, who a child will remember forever because you love them with a touch and in Jesus' name. Go ahead. We gave you this tool. He said, share your life. Share your highs and lows. Talk about things. Uh, be present with each other. Um, be focused when you do this. We talked about being grace-filled, yeah, and, and how, how do we do that to understand that, that we are to bring uh, the, the, the pizzazz of life in, in, into the life of others, just like God does for us with his love and joy and peace and hope through his spirit, right? We, we live by the spirit. We, we walk by the spirit. We, we, we said be open to one another. Be known as you pray uh, to God and are known by him. Pray in front of one another. And then we said, be a blessing. And the home huddle suggests that you touch just with the sign of the cross and say a blessing. You, want to put, may put, you may want to put your hand on the shoulder or you may want to put your arm around somebody and speak the words of blessing and follow that up with actions of love. You know, lots of times um, 
with commercials that say, hey, just try it for 30 days, right? Try it for 30 days, you'll love it. If not, money back guarantee. <laughs> so we got about 50 days until Easter. Try it till Easter. See what happens in your life. Just try it. See what happens. So every week we've been giving you some one another's because we think it's so, <laughs> so powerful that there's a hundred one another's uh, in the New Testament. We weren't made to go alone, right? And so here's some one another's for this time. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Not just one time, not just two times, but three times. This is in the Bible. Greet one another with a holy kiss. It's not something way over here in the corner. Three times it's out there. Greet one another with a holy kiss. And then this is the fourth time, greet one another with a kiss of love. So what is that holy kiss? What is that supposed to be about? Just like an empty gesture? No. It's supposed to be filled with the love of God in Jesus Christ. Kiss one another, uh, uh, greet one another with a kiss of love. Through love, serve one another. Say a word of blessing over each other. Be devoted to one another. Make it a priority. Seek good for one another. Let your words be followed by actions. Wherever you've turned away, wherever you're the leper, wherever you're in the mud, wherever you're the dust, wherever you're the dirty one, God, he doesn't come running after you. He gets in front of you and he embraces you. And he speaks powerful words of blessing in your life. By God's Spirit, you can do the same in the life of those who are close to you. This is Transfiguration Sunday. I don't know if you know the story or not, but Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, and he goes up on a mountain, and there he's transfigured before them. He's shown like the sun. You see him as a king of kings and lord of lords. Uh, the, 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 the dusty... A human or a tired human is thrown away. Here he is, the king of kings. And, and, and Peter, James, and John are blown away, and they say, oh, man, let's just stay here. Let's just build three tents. We'll stay right here. It's me and Jesus, baby. I'm good. And in the midst of that, the voice of the Father says this, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And so what do they do? They go down the mountain to kneel with others in their brokenness, in the dust to embrace them in love and to speak words of blessing into their lives. And Jesus said, the wise one is the one who hears my words and puts them into practice. Together. Be a blessing this week. Touch someone in love and with words of blessing. Would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, Jesus, uh, we thank you. We are that leper. We are that dead girl in so many ways in our lives. We are that blind man. We are the child that needs to be hugged. And you come to us in your spirit and you meet us there in our brokenness and in the dusty and dead places of our lives. Uh, and you hug us with your touch of love and you speak words of blessing into our lives. We praise your name. And we thank you, Lord, that as your spirit touches our hearts, it empowers us to bring the same to the lives of others. Open our eyes to see who that might be uh, and then guide us uh, in your grace. Um, we pray in your name. Amen. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, we stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The, the third day, day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. You guys noticed that generosity is a powerful thing? Um, recently for me, this, this took form and then I, I joined this workout group and my example just ran out the back door. I think he knew I was going to call on him. Um, and I started working out with this group and, and I'd been working out with them two mornings. One morning was Thursday morning, worked out in the, the rain and the muck. It was terrible, but good. And then Friday morning and then the following Monday morning was when we got robbed. And they took all of our sound equipment. And I reached out to this group of guys that I've been working out with three times and said, hey, this happened. And everybody did the usual thing. Hey, man, let us know how we can help. Because that's what people do whenever you're going through a hard time. How can we help? How can we help? And you're so overwhelmed because of all this going on, you don't know what to tell people. And one guy, LaCroix, who goes to another church, has another church that he's supporting. I don't know which church he goes to. He said, we are going to do something. We're going to do a 5K fundraiser for you guys because we want to support you guys and come together as God's people wherever we're scattered and support you guys as you guys are going through this. And so we're going to do a 5K to help cover the deductible for your sound equipment and because we just want to stand with you in the gap. And just like Pastor Brad talked about it, that's the thing that means the most is them standing by me and saying, hey man, I'm sorry this happened. We're with you in this. And so that's why we as God's people are generous here in this place is so that we can have a positive and powerful impact on the life of someone else. That's why we give so that other people can meet this Jesus that is full of generosity and grace. We're going to throw some uh, ways to give up on the screen as I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your generosity towards us in Jesus. Lord, help us to live by that example in our lives and be a blessing to those that you have placed in our lives. And Lord, as we gather this offering today, Lord, we ask that you would transform it into more people following you by your grace. Encourage us and empower us in this, that more may come to know you because of your love for us and your love in us towards those around us. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'll turn it over and you'll hear a little bit more about the, the race and all that sort of stuff. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to start off telling you guys a little bit more about that, uh, that 5K that's going to be put on. There it is. So it is going to be on February 27th at 2 p.m., it's at Foskett Ranch Park, which is over in Lincoln. Um, and to get more information about that, to get registered or to donate, either or. And by the way, this is for adults, for kids. If you're a one or a, <laughs> that's not a word. If you're a runner or a walker or a rucker, which is something I didn't know about, but I think it's like an in-between thing. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can. I have no idea. I don't know. Okay, I took a good guess. There you go. So you're going to go to stmatthewrockwood.com slash goldrush5k for all that information to get Or to volunteer. Or to volunteer, yes, as well. Um, we're looking for some volunteers for that day as well, so that's an option as well. All right. We have uh, Ash Wednesday coming up this week on February 17th. And so we have some opportunities for you um, for worship that night. So for families, we're going to have a communion service in the lobby for you. Really quick, we know that evenings are hard and school and trying to figure out how to fit everything into this virtual world that we're in. So we've got some opportunities for you at 536 or 630 to come on, come on up and do Family communion, we'll have ashes that you'll be able to do as a family together and um, start our Lent season off. Or you can come for traditional worship at 7 p.m. here in this room. Um, and so that will be in person or live streamed. And then we have our, our youth that have gone through first communion classes and they'll have their first communion that night as well. And before I go on, I forgot about this earlier. Um, you should have all received these uh, bracelets as you walked in. And I'm really sorry if they don't fit right. They told me these were going to fit all, and Pastor Nathan will tell you they do not fit all. But um, you can stretch them out if you put them on a water bottle. So anyway, they say repent and believe the good news, and it's got the Mark 1 verse 15 verse on it. And we just want you to wear these all during Lent and just um, as a reminder of why we're going through the season, which Beck is going to tell you more about now. Yes. So as many of you know, Ash Wednesday is the very beginning of the season of Lent, which is the time that we take to prepare our hearts for Holy Week and for Easter. Um, so through the season of Lent, we've got a couple opportunities for you. The first one is this upcoming series starting next Sunday is called Intersect. And we 
we can go back to that. Um, but that is about God's love intersecting our lives in the hard places. And then the Wednesday series that starts Ash Wednesday is Real Time, Real People, Real Savior. That is going to be Ash Wednesday, as you know, will be in person on Wednesday. The rest of the series will be online only, so we would love to have you join us at 7 p.m. Um, as we stream that into your homes. And then the last one is that our Sunday Bible study that is has been up and rolling all year is going to switch to a Lent study starting next weekend. So this is a great time to pop in if you are already a part of that study. If you are not yet a part of that study, this is a great time to get involved. It's a study called He Chose the Nails. It's a Max Lucado study. Um, to get more information, to get registered for that, stmatthewrockland.com slash Bible study. Um, and that takes place right after this service, either right in the community room or on Zoom. If you're joining us from home, Zoom is an option for that study as well. So we would love to have you join us for that. We have a really exciting class coming up called Financial Peace University. And if you have ever um, been through that, we just hear the most amazing stories of families or couples or individuals who have gone through that. And we're going to start that up on um, March 2nd. Um, on nine Tuesday nights starting at 6.30, and it will also be here in our community room. It's an in-person class led by Jeff and Shay Crumdick. And um, I'm gonna tell you a couple things, and then we're gonna watch a video from them. If you want more information on it, you're gonna go to our website slash FPU to sign up for it. We were giving away the first three spots free on that. Um, there is a cost involved with it, and two of those spots have been taken already. So if you wanna sign up, um, go to this website, find out how to get in touch with Jeff and Shay and get signed up and you can be the last uh, in the free uh, category there. So we're going to turn our, uh, our attention over to the screens right now with a video from Jeff and Shay before we head into prayer time. My name is Shay. And I'm Jeff. And we are leading the Financial Peace University course that is beginning in March. Financial Peace University is a course that gives you the baby steps to help you get out of debt, kind of walk through your finances and invest into your future. The course is a really simple way of being able to become financially free and get control of your life and your finances. Financial peace has changed our lives, uh, in my opinion. It has changed the way we live our lives and the way we do our finances. I mean. A little over two years ago, Jeff and I were in debt, didn't have really any savings for emergencies, um, and we were trying to scrape together a down payment for a home, and we're able to kind of take the concepts and run with them. And now, two years down the road, you know, today, um, we are debt-free, Minus except, our home. Except for the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a six month emergency fund. We are fully funding into our retirement accounts and we- Two paid off cars. Two paid two off paid cars. Off cars. <laughs> um, and we still live life comfortably. Um, so I think that's been the most exciting part about what financial peace has done for us. Um, it's really taught us to how to manage our money and budget and see that budgets aren't restrictive, but they give us the opportunity to spend honestly on the things that we need and then save for the things that we want. Mm -hmm. Most eye-opening spot was seeing how much we spent on things that we didn't realize we were spending so much on. And yeah. it was not fun to see that number. <laughs> Like a dinner here and a dinner there doesn't seem like a lot until you get to the end of the month and you look and see there was 10 or 12 dinners here and theirs and <laughs> those add up. Financial peace has really opened a lot of doors for us. Um, I mean, with our expanding family, uh, with a baby on the way, we have been able to save and feel comfortable that we can welcome a baby into our family. Um, financially comfortable um, and get the things that we need for her and support her in the way that we want to. Um, and I know we've also been able to, especially through 2020, um, being able to look at our budget uh, and really analyze where our money is going, we've actually been able to be more generous um, with the church, honestly. We were able to increase our giving amount 
um, just by knowing where our money was going. I think that has been two of the most key things is that it's given us the ability to expand our family and give generously. Yeah, it was knowing the baby's on the way and having a budget, it makes it easier. It's not a question of if, it's a question of how. We know we can, we just have to figure out how. We gotta allocate so much money here. It's a budget, it, it flows with, with your life. It's not set in stone, it, it changes and it's up to you to set that and see what's important and what needs to be budgeted for. We are super excited. Our course starts March 2nd, the first Tuesday in March at 6.30. Course material starts at $60 and you can sign up by shooting us an email or just going directly to our website. And we are offering the first three people that sign up for the course, get the course for free. And St. Matthew is also offering scholarships for anyone who needs financial assistance. It's pretty cool to hear the story about how God's working in their lives. Isn't that pretty cool? I know they're not here. They're watching at home. So uh, that's pretty awesome that God's blessing them and, and they're choosing to, to be part of God's blessing of others through this place. Uh, we come before our God uh, in a time of prayer. have a couple of prayer requests uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, we um, pray for all those who are mourning for uh, Reverend Carl Winnikin. Uh, he was a pastor down in Fresno and uh, passed away this past week. Uh, we're praying for healing for... Um, uh, Debbie Murphy, uh, for Mark Bancroft, who's hospitalized for Rod, who's in the hospital after testing positive for COVID. Uh, we pray for uh, Patricia Lennon, uh, Nancy Hansen's mother, who's recovering from a toe amputation and is in hospice. And we pray for Slade, the Brooks' son-in-law, who uh, just had an ultrasound that uh, showed more cancer. And so we come before our God in prayer. I invite you to stand as we come before our God in this time now. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you on those, on behalf of those who are in need in our community. Lord, we know that uh, you are walking alongside them, that you desire to get down in the dirt beside them in their hard stuff. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help us to step up and stand up and kneel down beside those that are in need uh, in our lives and in ways that are powerful and meaningful. Lord, we especially pray for and lift up to you Debbie and Mark and Rod, uh, Patricia and her children and Slade. Lord, we ask that you provide healing, that you would provide strength, that you would provide people that would walk alongside and, and encourage. And Lord, that you would bring healing. Lord, we pray for our government, for all those in positions of power and leadership. Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom and guidance and help them to govern with equity and justice, that the rule here and, and throughout the world would be a blessing to the people that you love. Lord, we also pray for all those who are mourning, uh, those who are mourning who haven't been able to mourn in the normal fashion. And Lord, we ask that you would provide people that would be able to wrap their arms around those who are hurting and suffering and in need. And Lord, as your people, help us to always remember the hope and the assurance of the resurrection that is ours in Jesus. Lord, we ask that your spirit would empower us this day, this week, to get down in love and in grace and bless those people that you have placed in our lives to receive that blessing. Lord, we are blessed to call you Father as your children who have a brother in Jesus. And so we come before you as Jesus taught us to and pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, or 14. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that grace that overflows into your hearts and your lives because of his death and resurrection for you. May the love of God, that love of God that never leaves you nor forsakes you, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that speaks words of grace and love to your heart that you may speak them to others, be with you this week as you go out with the blessing of our God. Go in his peace. <laughs>